Um, hello everyone. And um, I'm not sure it works well or not. <sighs> okay. So So uh, let's start my uh, talking. Today, uh, I want to give my talking it's about another biking story solution for the APM system. Uh, here is a biography about myself. Uh, I'm Panjian, you can call me Chista. And now I worked as JD.com in China as a senior DBA. And my professional, it's about distributed database middleware and distributed database. Uh, in open source community, I got involved uh, in Apache community as the Sharding Sophia PMC. Um, okay, this is a brief introduction about myself. Uh, I will give my talking, this talking will contain four parts. Uh, first of all, we'll give an APM overview. Uh, it will introduce the basic process of um, APM system. Uh, the part two, it's about backend storage. Uh, we will analyze that um, the what's the requirements or needs for backend storage. Um, part three, it's about Apache Sharing Sophia. We can consider whether we can use it as one option for backend storage for the APM system. So the last one will give the details about this solution. Okay, so let's get straight down with the part one, APM overview. Um, here is the diagram and you can see here, uh, generally <clears throat> the APM system will provide like the agent, uh, which will connect the data from the application and send this application to the server. The connector of the server will receive the data and push them into the backend storage. Therefore, if you want to show you there's some uh, interesting information like a dashboard, or like a tracing view or topology on the UI, then the aggregator of the server will send some querying to the backend storage and do some calculation, uh, prepare the result for the UI. So um, this is a basic precise for popular APM system. But today we will focus on the backend storage. As you know, it's uh, essential for most of um, APM system. After I looking into different uh, um, popular APM system that I found, uh, most of them will use the following solutions like Elasticsearch, Consendure, MySQL, and H2 for test environment. So the question is here that why do this popular APM system use these solutions? I will give a quick answer because these solutions meet the requirements like these. First, scalability. I will know every minute the APM system will connect massive data from the application. Therefore, if this solution can have the scalability or can have a huge space or capacity, the APM system, we don't worry that the data connected uh, reached the space limit as quickly as possible, right? So the second one, it's about um, simple querying um, because when we handle to the relationship of two applications, we'll consider 
does this application can provide can this um, application provide simple query api for us to use especially for sql because um, most of developers are familiar with this language uh, which will uh, simplify the programming work the next one is reliability um, i think it's a common factor when we decide to use a product we will consider that this product have a activity community if i have any questions i need some help i get my answer or helps as quickly as possible or does this uh, is this product popular in the industry if so we will consider or it reflects this product is relatively reliable right okay so the last one is tgl which means time to leave uh, this is a specific factor for apm system because the um, data or records connected from the agent will always have the um, properties like um, data time or data and the um, application will do fewer uh, queries for this history data therefore we hope that the solution can help us to remove or delete this um, history or stale data from the system if this if this uh, database cannot do such things then the apm system have to do it by themselves so um, from this uh, solution list we can found that there are three no sql solutions elasticsearch consenter hbase and mysql is traditional dbms uh, the last one h2 is for test environment but today i want to introduce a um, um, solution with new sql technique so um new sql also call, is also called scalable sql the main purpose of this concept is to make the traditional dbms with the scalability or make the traditional database clusters have a um, very huge or enormous capacity um, and there are three type of this uh, concept first new architecture which means you create a distributed database from the scratch the second one is transparent sharding of uh, like um, vitis or citas or apache sharing sophia um, in this uh, this speak of this implement you also need a traditional database cluster but you will build or create a um, uh, middle wire to help the applications or users to manage the database clusters uh, the last one is database as a service as you know like um, amazon website service it provides the database uh, as a service um, some cloud vendor or a database vendor will do such things for the users no matter uh, which it is the basic purpose of them is that to make it uh, as a single logic db so um uh, we will focus on the uh the second one uh, like you can see transparent sharding because apache sharding sophia is one implement of this type uh we will consider uh, that sharding sophia can um, be a backend storage solution for the apm system so uh, this is a brief introduction about sharding sophia as you can see it's the web page and github status uh, and also it defined itself as a um, um, distributed database ecosystem so why does it define itself as a um, ecosystem not a simple database in a middle wire i think the next slide will give us the answer uh, this is a diagram about its architecture you can see um, 
apart from the sharding feature, it also provides other features like distributed transaction or encryption. You can count it data masking or shadow or database governments. It provides user a lot of features. Uh, plus, it also provides two clients for you to choose. First the product is called Sharding GDBC. Um, it's a lightweight Java framework, and uh, it can provide the extra service or functions like iSize sharding distributed transaction in the GDBC layer. So I think it's very friendly for Java developers. Uh, another uh, product is called sharding proxy. Um, sharding proxy, it's um, you 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 need to deploy it independently, and the user use it as they use a advanced MySQL server or PostgreSQL server. So we call it advanced uh, MySQL server because it um, provides the MySQL basic functions, also provide sharding, distributed transaction, encryption feature, and governance. But today, we only focus on the sharding proxy with the sharding feature to consider uh, whether we can use this product to be one option for backend storage. But um, before I introduce the details about this solution, we can uh, get a little or brief uh, introduction, understanding about sharding. Um, here, maybe at first, you have a um, MySQL instance and a single MySQL instance, and that's enough. But along the time that you found the data stored is uh, reaching the capacity. Therefore, you have two ways to solve this issue. First one, you split um, the instance into different ones, including different tables. The second that you create replica for your primary nodes. And these replicas help to um, lighten the burden of the for the primary nodes. Another uh, efficient way is you use the two ways together. Therefore, the relationship among different uh, primary nodes and replicas will become very uh, complicated. Uh, in this case, we can import uh, database middleware. Uh, therefore, we can uh, the database middleware can help users to manage the database clusters. And for your application, you just to send your queries to this middleware. So it will be very easy, right? Uh, the sharding proxy will help you help user do such things. You can see this is the um, initial solution. But then when we import sharding proxy, it will help further manage the database clusters. Or you can see uh, the sharding proxy help make this uh, database cluster has the uh, uh, scalability. Uh, today, I will take the uh, Apache Skywalking for instance to give the details about the solution because now I'm working in this issue. Sorry for that. Um, here is the tracing view of the Apache Skywalking. Um, when I decide to start this issue, I will consider, does um, Apache sharding Sophia fit, fit this uh, APM system? Um, after I do some investigation that I found that there are two um, main uh, requirements for, uh, um, for the backend storage of um, Apache Skywalking. First is massive volume, because like I said before, every minute Apache Skywalking will connect massive data from the agents, uh, therefore, uh, they need the hope the storage can have the scalability or have a enormous capacity. Uh, 
even in even there is a so uh, massive records in the storage uh, skywalking also hope that they can gather without as quickly as possible uh, which means query efficiency the second one is that um, sql uh, query because in some scenario skywalking will do some queries with this language uh, based on these two requirements that i found uh, sharding Sophia fits the sharding skywalking so uh, i started this work or this issue mm, the very first and most important step is to review all the tables and queries of um, uh, skywalking because i need to find the sharding table sharding key and sharding algorithm uh, sharding table means the target table that you need to shard Sharding key like the global unique ID, uh, we will assign the specific record to one table by sharding key. Or by means of sharding key, we can uh, get the readout uh, expected. So the sharding algorithm, like um, how we split or shard our tables and instance, um, like uh, you can use um, modulo algorithm uh other records with other even uh sharding key will be signed one table other records with an uh, odd sharding key will be routed to another table or maybe if you want to store some uh, log records uh, you can make the sharding algorithm like um, one day one sharding table so after uh, these reviews, the next steps will become very easy. You just need to deploy the sharding proxy, prepare the complication based on three uh, important uh, items, and uh, uh, test, test it, right? So here is a brief uh, example to prove that how sharding Sophia improved them query efficiency. Um, maybe at first, uh, there is some um, like PostgreSQL database, and um, uh, this query uh, is sent to the instance, which means the application will gather it out from 10 million records. But um, when sharding proxy receives this same query, it will do some analyze that I found maybe this SQL just to just need to be executed in two shards, which means you will gather it out from two millions. What's more, sharding proxy will parallelize the execution, so it will improve the query efficiency furthermore. Um, but here is another important topic: the topic about this solution. Um, because maybe your system is online already. Therefore, if you want to import the sharding proxy, you need to migrate your uh, history data to the new data flex database cluster, uh, namely sharding proxy. Sharding Sophia provides a migration tool called sharding scaling. Uh, it will help user to Migrate data from the original one to the new database cluster. Uh, it will uh, first it will migrate the history data, uh, and then as you know, um, uh, the original database will receive the changes or modifications uh, while we migrate the history data. Therefore, the next step is for us is to handle the incremental data. Sharding scaling will subscribe the binary log and transform this log into actual SQL and apply this SQL into to the new database cluster. And then in a specific time, you uh, need your application stop writing or reading or querying and change the application to connect a new database cluster. Mm. Then all sites. So, 
Here is the to-do list I prepare for you if you want to uh, import sharding uh, proxy as one uh, option of your uh, backend storage. The next slide slide it's about uh, a brief comparison about sharding Sophia and other solutions. Um, but I want to say that each solution has its props and counts. Uh, we will uh, always focus on the cons. For sharding Sophia, the first is that um, currently TTL feature is unsupported. And the next one is that um, circle SQL limits. Maybe in the original database, your uh, querying works well, but some SQL cannot work well or cannot support it in uh, sharding proxy. Therefore, you need to do some modification. Uh, the last one, last slide, it's about the user list. And if you worry that um, does this product have an activity community, or uh, does it uh, does this product have many users, then I think this slide will tell you the answer. Okay, so. Uh, you can contact us by the following ways uh, if you want to learn more information about it. Thanks for everyone listening. So, does anyone have any question? <laughs> Thank you.